there you have it, some background. Let's take this further. Johannesburg is synonymous with gold mining. In the Witwatersrand area, which centers around Johannesburg, are the deepest and largest gold mines in the world. Johannesburg was founded as a mining camp for gold mining. The Witwatersrand, or the Ridge of White Waters, is where the gold was originally found. The gold is found in steeply dipping metamorphosed, that means rock that has been transformed from sedimentary mud and slush and sand to hard rock by heat. The gold is found in metamorphosed rocks which dip at about 30 degrees to the south from Johannesburg and then in an arc east and west and south. That rock evidences a massive depth of water deposited sediments that extend over hundreds of kilometers. That rock has been formed by pressure and heat transforming mud and sand deposits and conglomerate beds into hard rock. This piece of geology around Johannesburg is one of the most intensively understood geologies around the world. The density of mines in this area is amazing. And everything about those mines evidences what I'm going to show you. So now I'm going to take you through some information about the South African gold mining industry. We're going to go down a gold mine. I'm going to fill you in on the first piece of key evidence on which my case is based. Gold mining is a precision industry. As you've already seen, the gold is extracted from thin veins. It is subject, the, the ore is subject to precise chemical processes to extract the gold, and the gold is so scarce and so rare that it is only used in high value applications such as jewelry and computer electronic circuits. The scale of the gold mines is huge, as indicated by the size of the machines in the pictures, and so is the scale of the deposits. As I've mentioned, the gold is in thin veins. The concentration of gold is measured in grams per ton. It's a minute concentration. Locating the gold is a major activity because the gold is very difficult to, to find. The ore is crushed finely and the gold is then extracted with chemical processes. The deepest gold mine is over 3.9 kilometers deep. That's 14 and a half times the height of the hill Bratao, 4.7 times the height of the Burj Khalifa. That's two kilometers below sea level. It's important to note that the gold occurs in the same geological for formation as Northcliffe in the south and the Michalisberg in the north. In the south, the strata dip off to the south as indicated in the photographs on the left. And then strangely on the north in the Michalisberg, the same strata dip to the north. The gold is found in hard metamorphosed rock. You can see a typical stope mining area on the left and a piece of outcrop uh, quartzite rock on the top of Northcliffe on the right. It is extremely hard and it has a semi-glassy uh, appearance. As mentioned, these ore bodies, although they were deposited horizontally, now dip at about 30 degrees. And you see here a cross-section of a typical gold mine showing how the reef is accessed and extracted. Here we see a few photographs taken down a gold mine and you can see the sloping characteristic of the roof of the excavation. The question is how did it get to slope at that angle? Looking at the surface of the, the surface geology around the Witwatersrand, you will notice that it is extremely complex and that there's evidence of 
great contortion and disruption with all the different types of rock as you can see in the map in front of you. Drilling down to the gold fields themselves, again you find that there is no uniformity. The concentrations of gold are distributed at various locations and again there is great diversity in the geology. Looking at a cross section we see the rock dipping at about 30 degrees but you'll notice a few other key points. First of all the shifts vertically up and down all over the place shown by the black lines, the faulting, showing that the surface of the earth after the horizontal deposition, after the tilting was subject to huge vertical displacements. And then a further interesting phenomenon, the top of that material has been chopped off and there is other material laid down horizontally on top of it. Looking at the stratigraphic column, a vertical section through the gold-bearing rock, we see that the sedimentary rocks are about two kilometers in vertical height. Consider the body of water in which, which had to exist for this material to be deposited so uniformly, and also the body of water that was necessary to remove material to this depth to create what you see in front of you. And then consider that the deepest mines are close to four kilometers, two kilometers below current sea level. This had to require a very large body of water in terms of depth, extent, and erosion sources. It's not a stream de deposited formation or delta on the side of a, an inland sea. This requires a very large inland sea, or in fact a very large sea. The uniform deposition implies that there was a uniform sea, and it also implies high velocity deposition. Schematically, what we see is the two kilometer thick uh, bedding of sedimentary rock, originally horizontal, upthrust by the halfway house granite dome of molten rock, and extending below sea level. Try and imagine the forces that were necessary to create what you see in front of you. To sum up, we find ourselves with huge depth and extent of sedimentary materials, originally horizontally deposited but now sloping steeply. We find massive faulting. This can only have resulted from deposition in water over a large area and then subject to intense pressure and temperature. Where did it come from? How did it happen? <music>